Here we are in the Sierra Maria Los Velas Natural Park. I'm going to take you on a journey following the construction of a pigment garden, which, although the journey will begin here in eastern Andalusia, by following the histories and the stories of the plants themselves, it will take us around the world. My name's Stephen, and as a peasant, as a painter, as a scientist, I'm, I'm fascinated, fascinated by the idea, idea of making, making pigments, pigments from, plants. from plants. The site of the garden is on an old water catchment system, a traditional strategy for farming such arid land. It consists of a series of terraces, a well, and a balsa or reservoir. However, the water catchment system no longer works as it should, due to a lack of maintenance. And here is the well that forms a part of that water catchment system. Let's have a look inside. Yep, it's completely dry. It's been like that for the past 50 years or so, since the land was abandoned The Sierra Maria Los Meles is a particularly arid area of Almeria, but this is exasperated by illegal drilling for water for use in the intensive farming practices on the plains below, which export year-round fruit and vegetables to northern Europe. So, despite the fact that the garden is situated on a water catchment system, we are going to have to work with the conditions and carefully select plants that are drought tolerant. Well, it's raining, and this is fantastic news. Here, in the National Park the Sierra, Sierra Maria Los Velis, we have an incredibly dry climate. And if the March rains don't come, we'll have a big problem for our garden. So I, for one, am delighted. Here we are on the site of our pigment garden in the, the Sierra, Sierra Maria, Maria Los Meles National Park. The month is March. The first seeds we're going to plant are woad seeds. Woad in English, yerba pastel or glasto in Spanish, Isatis tinctoria in Latin, and as its Latin name belies, it was traditionally used as a dye. It contains the precursors for indigo, indigotin and isatin. So it produces a blue pigment. It was widely cultivated in Europe for millennia, from as far north as Scandinavia to as far south as the Mediterranean. The plant is believed to have originated in the steppes of the Caucasus, whence it spread east and west, becoming two distinct species, Chinese woad and European woad, both producing indigo. So, while it can be cultivated all around Europe, it displays adaptations for the arid conditions of where it originated, having a long taproot which can grow up to five foot long. Moreover, it has a history of being cultivated in Andalusia by the Moors, so taking all these things into account, we are hopeful that it may thrive in our garden. The seeds have a special coating of a germination inhibiting chemical that is water soluble. This washes off in the spring rains, ensuring that the seeds only germinate in a good year. It also inhibits other plants around from germinating, thus giving it a head start against competitors. In this electrochemical analysis of pigment we have extracted from woad previously, we can clearly see isatin, indigo and indirubin. So now we just have to wait to see if the rains continue and our seeds germinate.
Luckily, the spring rains are continuing, which is great for our garden and our little woad seeds, but also for the whole area. Last year was the worst drought in 70 years, so it is a welcome relief. Since the well on the water catchment system is currently dry until some maintenance work can be carried out, the farm has no water source. All the water has to be brought in. So the rain is also helping to fill the tanks that supply the house, making everyone happy. Well, it's about three and a half weeks later and now it's April and our woad has germinated. Now this is great news but our only worry is that the soil is very clay rich. This means that after the rains have finished it's gone incredibly hard and baked in the sun. So we'll have to just see how things go this year but next year I think we'll put some compost in with the soil to give it a more open and loose texture. Well here we are back in the lab in London. Now you're probably wondering how a green woad leaf such as this can be used to make blue pigments shades such as this and this. Well I'm afraid we're just going to have to wait until harvest time and our next episode.